Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. You're welcome. You're warmly welcome. This is your home. Yes, sir. Amen. God bless you for coming to us. Amen. Amen. Today we are going to teach. We're going to learn, right? Who was here last night? Who didn't come? Oh, you missed something. Amen. God bless you for your presence here. I told you before we begin the teachings, I will ask some questions concerning yesterday's movie. Yes. Remember what I said? Okay. Number one. What is the name of the angel who visited the town? Say, say, say. Yes, Nana? Gabriel. Oh, you were here yesterday? No. Oh, but you were in the spirit? Yeah. What was the name of the town that you visited? <laughs> <laughs> the town of promise. The town of promise. Oh, That's my voice. Before Abraham came to the town, what was the state of the town of promise? It was. There was no rain. It was broken. That was the way. Let's have for him. The town of there was a pastor's daughter in the church. What happened to her? She was drug, drug addict. She was a drug addict. What was her end state? You were here last night. And what happened before Angel Gabriel came to her? She died. Good. So Angel Gabriel came and laid her hand on her and she revived again. Amen. When they were in the church, and you give that this something that made the rain fall. What did the angel do, AC? The angel poured water yeah. on the ground. And she poured ordinary water on the ground. Amen. There was one man who was not believing this angel. <laughs> what was the occupation of this man? The last two verses is Amma. Oh. I wasn't here, but he knows what I'm going to ask. Don't worry about that. So we learned that when the angel came to the town, things changed, right? So, Sister Amma, when an angel is in your life, does th things change for you? Yes. Can you give us one example of what has changed in your life? Only one. Your character. Amma's character. Let's get that for Amma. That's why today she's in church. Otherwise, you go to this class and you'll be sleeping till this morning. The last question. The last question. When the officer one did not believe Gabriel, and he said, I am Gabriel, how was his appearance changed? He changed. Yeah. And everybody said, wow. Oh, what happened? He grew what? He grew what? Wings. Amen. He grew wings. So, are you here? Angels can appear to you in man form. Don't forget. So when we say the angel of the Lord visited me, don't always expect somebody with wings at the back. <laughs> uh -huh. But because the officer one did not believe, Gabriel said, I am Gabriel. And it was amazing last night. Did you learn something from it? Yes. yes. Good. So if only one of these angels is in your life, mm. you can know what will happen. So we're going to study a bit about them, and then we desire and we pray that God will let them come to us. Amen. Amen. Good. I begin. The word angel, what does it mean? <laughs> okay. The word angel means messenger. Osmafo, messenger. It means simply messenger. In the Old Testament, the word we use for messenger is malak. It means messenger. And in the New Testament, which was written in Greek, it is called angelos. That one also means messenger. 
not Angela, Angel. but Angelus. So Angela, are you an angel? Yes, Angela is an angel. Amen. Good. So majority of the times, when we say um, an angel, it means God has divinely sent that angel to go and deliver a special message to somebody somewhere. Who can give me an example in the Bible where God sent an angel to someone? Okay, the angel came or he spoke. Okay. But I want an angel that God sent that he walked to the person and give the message. Nana? Thank you. Let's go for Nana. We are there, man. Eh? God sent angel Gabriel to go to Mary and say, Mary, you have found favor before God. You're going to conceive and bear a son. It was an angel. But come to think of it, did this angel come with uh, wings at the back? No. If not, Mary would have run away. We are going to learn slowly by show. Amen. When were the angels created? Were they created before man or after man? After man. Before man. Before man. Before man. What's the question? The question is, when did God create the angels? And they were did there God already. create the angels before or after man? They were there. What they were there. They were where? They were where? Okay. Let's see what the Bible says. If you want to talk, it's teaching. Raise up your hand. I'll call you to tell you for you to tell us what you want to say, okay? You're not in my character. So we just learn accordingly then. Now, let's open to Psalm 148, verse 2. I have it on the screen. So everybody is gonna read, you're gonna read a lot of scriptures today. And I told you yesterday to bring your pens and papers to take notes. But if you don't take notes, you won't be noticed. Write notes. Uh -huh. Psalm 148, verse 2. He says, Praise ye him, all his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Let them praise the name of the Lord. Why? For he commanded, and they were created. So angels were created. Were you also created? Yes. So what's the difference between you and an angel then? We are all created beings. But we have our positions in this creation. Amen. Good. And Genesis chapter 2 verse 1 says. Yes, sir. I have a question. Yes. Uh, your question was when uh, were they created to fall or after? Uh, but when, uh, from where we read, know that they were created, but so the answer has not yes. been yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I guess. <laughs> the next chapter 2 verse 1 says, Thus the heavens and the earth were completed, and all their hosts. The heavens was created, and everything in it. The word host there refers to the inhabitants of heaven, that is the angels, and everything in it. So when you move further to Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, the Bible says, let us make man in our own image, brother. You see? So here, the hosts were completed. The angels were completed. It was after that verse 15, 16, 17 that God said, let us make man in our own image. So the angels were there before we came. Have I answered your question, sir? What is the question that we are using here? Uh, it's New King James Version. Because when you read this one, New, New International Version, it said, mm -hmm. Praise him all his angels. Mm -hmm. Verse 2, so you can see that. Okay. Yeah. Praise ye him all his angels. That's Psalm 148. You see, the oil, all his angels were used here. Yes. And all his hosts, that's a multitude of them. Is that correct, sir, in the Bible? Yes. Good. So that's it. Are you okay after now? So, God made the heavens and all the hosts, all the angels in heaven, it was filled up. And when you come down to Genesis 2, 15, 16, 17, he said, let us make man in our own image. So, angels were made before man. We understand up to this point. Okay. Now, 
God gave each of them a distinct duties and definite domains to rule. Some of the angels, we call them archangels. Some of them, we call them seraphims. Some of them, we call them cherubims. There are many, many, many various parts of them or differences. Some of them have six wings, as our coordinator said. When they are worshiping God, they cover their feet with their two of their feathers, and two other feathers to cover their face, and two of the other one to cover their, themselves. They can't look at God. They are twenty-four-seven worshiping God. So when we come to church, we say we are worshiping. You have just get a privilege. <coughs> Angels, demo. They don't know no concern. They don't know no thing like that. They cover everything and they bow down. So when we say we worship God, then we are doing our great our God. Angels, they are bowing down. But we are going to limit it to the uh, lower part, those ones that are assigned to me and you. We leave the upper one aside for next time. Amen. Amen. Good. Now, the nature of angels, here's, here's where you have to learn a lesson from. Their nature. Mm -hmm. When you see a nature, it means how something is. If you tell me, tell me about the nature of uh, the northness in Ghana, I'll tell you they are very strong. Yeah. <laughs> if you tell me, tell me the nature about the gas in the south by the sea, say, hey, I took away for the world. Everybody has his own nature in the way they are what made. Now, angels are finer beings, as greater beings. It is dependent on time and space. The scriptures here in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 11 says, Whereas angels who were greater in power and in might do not bring violent accusation against them before God. The word I want you to see is power and might. They are very powerful. They are very powerful. Once upon a time, David counted the soldiers in the army of Israel. And God was angry with uh, David. God gave him three punishments to choose one from. So God, you yourself punish me. I said, okay. One angel go and display in Israel. And that day, an angel, only one, killed almost 70,000 people. One time, oh, you can imagine. God saw the way this angel was massacring people. He said, no, no, please, I beg, stop, 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 stop. God himself had compassion. God, angels, they don't have compassion. When God say, kill, kill it. That's how they are. So you have to know the nature of the person guarding you or the angel guarding you. Now, by very says, angelic nature is superior to our present earthly human nature. They are superior to us. But the amazing thing we are going to learn very soon how can somebody who is superior to you save you? It's amazing. But what we should learn is that we should not worship angels. What did I say? When we pray, who do we pray to? God. And when God wants to bring you the answer, who does he use to bring you the answer? Good. So we don't worship angels or we don't pray to them. But by nature, they are superior. They are powerful. Hmm? And their level, we can't compare ourselves to them. Amen. I'm coming, sir. One second. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 that when God formed man, what did God use to form man? The dust of the ground. But what did he use to form the angels? Fire, Fire. and wind. So if somebody say, I'm firing Satan, I say, eh. <laughs> we use fire to bend this guy, we're going to use fire to, eh. is it your kitchen fire? No, it can't even go near to him. And in appearance, in intellect, in power, in mobility, and in authority, let's go back to last night's movie. Gabriel was there, that blind girl who went to the doctor, right? Gabriel had the power and authority over the blindness. Mm -hmm. So the moment he put the eye hands on the girl's eyes, what happened? He opened his eyes. So they have power over things that we don't have power over. Mm -hmm. But still, we are not about to worship them. Uh, you wanted to ask a question here? Uh, from 
what we read, we know that um, God prepares man and an angel. Yeah. So, and the Bible also says God prepares man in his own image. My question is, were angels also created in the same image as God? Amen. Oh, are you living? Oh, okay, all right. Good. Our brother asked a question. Were the angels created in the image of God? I can use the same Bible to say the answer is no. Why? Because in Genesis, the Bible says, God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. But he didn't say, let us make man in our image and likeness as we made the angels. If that one was part of the quotation, I would say yes. Angels are in God's image. Man is the only creation in creator, creature in God's creation that has God's image according to this Okay. Yeah. <laughs> when God says, let us make man in our own image, let's say Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ came on earth, did he have wings? Did Jesus have wings? They had two less as we have, two years, one nose, 36, uh, 33, uh, teeth, or whatever, how many, man, I, I don't know, 32, okay. Yes, had the same as we have, just this God. Uh -huh. But when an angel came yesterday, we watched the movie, at the end, what he grew was wings, but we don't have wings. So, uh, but I can say that God's image, that's how we are, God works, we walk. God has hair. We have hair. Because as I have said, I saw God on his throne. And the hair was in. You see? So the nature and how muscular we are, God is like that. But the angels are different. The Bible did not say so that God created the angels in his image. We are the only ones who are privileged to have God's image. Amen. Are you here? If I catch you again, you come and stand beside me. Amen. Let's continue. Angels can not be hurt physically. You cannot slap an angel and he will say, ouch. Their physical body or subtle body is different from ours. So they can appear and disappear. When we use the word appear and disappear, yesterday I went through the Hebrew words for that. They can stand beside you, but you don't notice them. They can blind your eyes, you can't see anything. It happened when Peter was in the prison. The angel went there and brought him out. The um, soldiers were standing there, but they did not see him. Why? <coughs> you can't see anything. So how can you hurt him? You had a question? Yeah. Yes. Uh, according to the Bible, yes. Um, I read a chapter, but uh, one man fought with an angel and he was able to buy the angel. But he said, buy it was Jacob. Yeah, but he said, angels cannot be hurt. Okay, all right. Thank you. I like your question. It's what exactly we did it. We call something um, during this. The redemption is where your power can reach. When uh, uh, Jacob was wrestling with the angel, he was wrestling with the angel out of the angel's jurisdiction area. I am now an elder of PRWC Turnout. My power and my capability ends here. Yeah. 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 When I go to PRWC in Antwerp, like two weeks ago, I have to follow the instructions of that place. Mm -hmm. My jurisdiction does not reach there. So angels, they have the area where their jurisdiction lies. Yes, so if Jacob had wanted, he should fly the ladder and go up there and find them. That time, Jacob will not be in his own jurisdiction area. And that's what I'm saying. That was why he was able to um, wrestle with the angel to daybreak. You get it? Okay, amen. Besides, uh, is that correct answer or you can ask something to me? No, Okay. Good. If you want to say something, ask me. I'm here. Give us a question. Mental. 
Uh-huh. I'm sure you talk. You want to ask me something? Nothing? I'll ask you later. You ask me later. Okay. Good. We are going to read something from Hebrews chapter 1, verse 4. Let's start from 13. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 13 and 14. And Robert is going to read for us. Amen. It doesn't matter. I'll speak the last one. Okay, problem. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. You have it? Open your Bible. I want to see everyone's Bible today. Hebrews 1, 13 and 14. Jogan, where's your Bible? You left everything home. Did I told you we are going to do studies? Where is your Bible, brother? Open it. 1, 13 and 14. Davis, long time no see. How are you? Angela, please open yours. You will, you will read the verse 14 for us. I'm reading. 113. Uh -huh. I'm reading from Hebrews chapter 1 up to 13. 13 and 14. Uh, 13 and 14. I'm reading. But to which of the angels said, He appeared. But to which of these angels did he say, uh -huh. He at any time sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy foot suit. Verse. And verse 14, Angie, continue. Please, come on, come on. We are learning. Today is not preaching, it's learning. Interactive. Verse 14. Yes. Uh, are they not all ministering spirits? Ministering spirits. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. Good. So the angels are ministering spirits. They are sent forth to those who will be heirs of salvation. That part alone, there is a clause. If you are not among those who are heads of salvation, angels are not to minister unto you, period. The question is, who are they that are heads of salvation? There are those who believe in the name of the Son of God. Understand? Who are cleansed by the Spirit and by the blood of Jesus. Amen. That one, go and recognize you that you are part of those who are heirs of salvation. So angels that are ministering spirits, they are sent to do your bidding. They are there to serve you. Amen. Amen. I have a question here. What is the difference between serve and worship? What is the key word for serve? Awesome. Awesome. What is the key word for worship? Oh, you know. oh, sorry. Okay. Then what's the difference between serve and worship in English? Yes. Uh, I can say um, serving someone, it means that person has authority over you. Yes. Yeah. And worshiping him, it has no authority but. <laughs> no. Sit down and come again. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sit down and come again. Yeah. Check, check the words and come again. Yeah. Uh -huh. Robert. Uh -huh. uh, Send someone is uh, the person of give an object. How is it in the Yeah, okay. an assignment. An assignment to do, do something. Okay. And what should do is you are trying to. Uh, what you say? Yes, they are good. They are dying, they are good. And better. And better. So, so, Okay. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Let's have a Robert. He's coming. He's getting good. He's getting good. So serving means you are doing somebody's contract assignment, right? And worshiping means you are going down low for the deity, for the highest person, telling him how great he is. Now, we said earlier on that angels are superior to us. They are higher. But still, we can send them. God can say, go to Sister Sandra. He's looking for a job. Go and open her eyes to read the advertisement in the newspaper, 124. And then they will come along and... Maybe you have been reading the pages for months. You, can't, you have not seen that the advert is there that you're looking for a secretary. Then they will pass by sister, how are you? Long time no see. I like the readings you are reading. Look at page 44. I like this interesting picture. Then the person will pass by and gone. 
Oh shit, I've been reading this, I've never seen that there's an advert here for people looking for somebody to be a secretary. Oh, he has come to serve you. See the difference now? Uh -huh. Now, check this one here. First Timothy 5 2 said, The angels they are elect. Another beautiful word for that word is they are holy. They don't like to sin. You understand? Once upon a time earlier on, we were raised there, when Satan rebelled against God, some angels went along with him. But we will go there later. But in nature, angels they are holy. That's why the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5 21 that I charge you before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels. That word elect, another translation uses the word holy angels. So angels they are holy. So if you want an angel to protect you, you can't be doing bad stuff. They will go away from you. Amen. Good. They are mobile. They are not standing right still like the statues we see in town. From now here to, uh, let me say, Antwerp, when you one second, he can reach there. Mm -hmm. And you go and wait for the tram, mm -hmm. for the train. Look at how many hours it take you from here to Antwerp. Mm -hmm. And here a second, he can go and come back. It is stated in Genesis 28, verse 2. That's a question our brother asked. Okay, I'm brushing on because of time. They are powerful. You can read this one in 2 Thessalonians 1, verse 7. The Bible says, and to give you who are troubled rest with us when the Lord Jesus Christ will you from heaven with his mighty angels. So angels are what? They are mighty. All that we are talking about now, we are talking about their nature, their characteristics. They are not to be joked with. They are very powerful. When you read the book of Revelation, they say, the Bible says, one of them can put his leg in the sea and one leg in the land. So you can see how huge they are. They are very powerful and mighty. They are very intelligent and wise. Very smart. Very intelligent. When you read 2 Samuel chapter 14, verse 20, the Bible says, In order to change the course of things, your servant do update this. But my Lord has wisdom, like wisdom of the angel of God, to know all things that are on earth. So the angels, they are very knowledgeable. Mm. They are intelligent. Mm. Whilst you are planning to do this, they know your next move. Mm. That's how they are. Let's go back to yesterday's movie. When the girl, the reporter, asked Michael for a story, what did he say? Gabriel. Gabriel, sorry, thank you very much. Gabriel, the man, he said, you want a story? What about your story? Yes, you have a story, you want to take my story? But the man did not tell Gabriel anything about him. That's what I'm talking about. So the angel, they are very wise. They are intellect. They are knowledgeable. Before you say it, God will let them see it before you even tell them. Amen. Let's move on. But they are not omniscient. We have spoken about all that they are. Now let's see what they are not. They are not omniscient. Omniscient means knowing everything. Angels are also limited. They don't know everything. But they are wiser than me and you. He said, said this in Matthew chapter 24, verse 36. He said, But the day and hour no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven. You don't even know when God is or Jesus is coming back here on earth. So that means angels don't know. Not everything that they know. But if God wants them to know, God will tell them, go to Brother James' house. There's a soup in the fridge. It's three days old. When she is, you're going to be sick. Go and cause something for the soup to come out from the fridge. If they can do it. Before you go home, the soup, ah, man, I thought I put the fridge. The mouse has come. The mouse has come to swallow your soup. It's an example. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. Why they are not? They are not omnipotent. They cannot do everything as God. No. God can give them a power to do something, but they cannot do everything at once. See, that's why we are not to worship them. Okay. You can find this one in Romans chapter 8, verse 38. <laughs> See, for I am persuaded that neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor to come, nor height, nor death, nor any other thing created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. When you are called on, nothing can separate you from it. Even angels cannot do that. So if angels cannot separate you from God's love for you, it means angels are not omnipotent. The word omni means all. Potent means potential. God is the only one who has the potential to do everything. But angels are limited. Question. Uh -huh. Persuaded means to overtax. Oh, yeah. You say you are weak. You come here to attack on this for money to do. So that I do, hey, help for one. And that's persuasion. Yes. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. He, she asked if before we came to the earth we were angels before we turned to human beings. There's nowhere the Bible has said that when you die you change to an angel or you are angel before you change to human being. No. No. It's not like that. Okay. What it is, God has already made your spirit and your soul ready. So when your mother needed a daughter, God fused those things into your father. And the chemical reaction took place and you were born with the flesh. Amen. But you are not an angel. You are a spirit with the soul. What were able to God? Okay. I said the able to as it happened, you will start to escape. Yeah. <laughs> if I were there, let me answer her question. When we die, we are not going to become like angels. No. We will be living this body, but we get another body again. Paul said, when we, we are clothed on with a new body, we have another body again. This one it will rot. Hmm? But your soul and your spirit will continue to live in that new body. So when you want to go to hell, you go to hell and the fire will burn and you feel it. Mm -hmm. You feel it. This body will go away, but you get another body again. But you will not have the wings to fly as angels do. Darling, uh, it's not in the Bible that when we, 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 uh, we die, we change to angels. Or oh, others, can somebody help me with the quotation? that says something? You can go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 42. It will explain everything to you. How we go to the okay, first Corinthians. Good one. So we not turn into angels, no. So when you see me in my in your dream with angels, shoot me. I'm not an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I saw this. Uh, uh, this man in Ghana said to me, "Do you want to fly?" Please, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Amen. It can be possible. We are men. Amen. Okay. The last one is they are not. I'm coming, please. They are not omnipresent. Omnipresent means to be at one place or to everywhere at the same time. Only God can be at one place, thousand places at the same time. Right now, I'm here. God is in my house. He is here. He is. He uh, is. He's in everywhere. But angels are confined to one specific area at a time. Amen. The quotation you can get is Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. Everything is in the Bible for you to know as a backup. Question. Um, he said angels are powerful and mighty. Mighty. And yes. he said um, Jacob fought with one. Yes. And how was he able to love slow? Oh, that's why I just explained to your brother. Yeah. When an angel goes outside a place where his power is limited, we call that one jurisdiction. For example, when Moses died, Satan came to take the body, but the angel of the Lord was there. You could have killed him and straight away said, no, no, no. 
but he just rebuked him. You understand? Every part where they are, they have a power to do certain things at the same time. That's why we learned earlier on that they are not omnipotent. They cannot do everything at the same time. Maybe Koneta will help us. Maybe. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Angels are visible. Angels are invisible. The whole thing is, they are spirits. But if God wants you to see them, you can open your eyes. Yes. First, Joshua saw an angel with the sword. <coughs> Abraham saw an angel. A lot of people in the Bible, they saw an angel. But I want to bring it down. When Apostle Pokunia came here to preach, he said, there's a, a young, there was a young girl in the church who always see an angel. I don't know if you remember. So, he wanted to name his child Caleb. But God don't want Apostle Pogo you know, to name his child Caleb. So an angel appeared to this young girl and said, go and tell Apostle Pogo you know, not to name his son Caleb. Then Apostle Pogo you know, being an apostle and a girl who is not, who, who is not Dickness, who is that, without any title, and he is seeing angel and he apostle not seeing him. Sometimes things are strange. So he made an appointment with this girl that he wanted to go to the church in one evening to play together with the girl so that he, being an apostle, would see an angel. Mm -hmm. Angel, I will not come to you because of your title. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Angel will come to you when God wants him to come to you. Amen. And you will see an angel when God wants you to see. So they went both into the church with one elder. Before they bowed down and prayed, the young girl asked Apostle Pogina, Papa, have you seen him? I think he was there that day. And, 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 and Apostle was shocked. And he said, where is he? He said, Papa, he's just standing here. <laughs> <laughs> but Apostle couldn't see him. But that young girl saw him. So the battle that you are saying is not the physical battle, but really Jacob saw an angel. And he wanted the angel to bless him. So he was struggling with the angel until he, uh, he, thought this he dislocated his joint. He dislocated his joint. So that was the battle. It's not the battle like fighting, but he was struggling to get something from the angel. Suppose, as we are sitting here right now, maybe you will see an angel, and none of us will see that angel. And it can be that you may be struggling with that angel, and nobody will uh, notice it. Remember, when Apostle Paul was struck down, Bible say the people around them, they saw him down, but the voice no one could hear. Only Apostle Paul. Praise the Lord. So he, angels are visible and they are invisible. I think I'm clear. Yeah. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. Too. Amen. So let's move on. Somebody will say, do angels die? Do angels make babies? Because sometimes you read your book, you see Kleine Kleine Angel Test. In your book, yes. But angels, they don't have babies and they cannot reproduce. Why? Some time ago, when Jesus Christ on earth was on earth, some people came to him, just as we asked, if we die, are we going to marry in heaven or whatever? This is the answer Jesus gave. Jesus said to them, the sons, the sons of the age, I'm reading from Luke 20, 36. The sons of this age marry and are given to marry. You understand? You marry and you give it to marry, just like um, the B. McCarthy. When you are about 20 something age, your father will give you in marriage to somebody who will come. Yeah. And like me now, I'm already gone, so don't look at me like that. <laughs> so, this age, <laughs> we are getting married and we give it in marriage. <laughs> but those are counted worthy to attain age that after and the resurrection from the dead. Neither marry nor give it in marriage. So after you die and you resurrect to heaven, you're not gonna marry again. So if you wanna marry, marry him. <laughs> uh, nor can they die anymore. Uh, what is your name? Imelda. We cannot die anymore. So this body is limited to this earth. The body you are going to get when you resurrect from death in heaven, you're not going to die anymore. Look at the next sentence. For they are equal to the angels. 
and are signs of God, being signs of the resurrection. So when we uh, resurrect in heaven, we're not going to be angels, but be like, use the word like, like. or equal to angels. So to answer your question further, we are not going to be angels. You're going to be like, like them. You're best sir. You're best sir. You know where you're the crop. What you say? No discussion. Talk to me. I'm here. If you are confused, pause for a while. Write your question down. You get that to this point? OK. Now, the different duties assigned to angels depend on the type of angels being assigned to at a particular duty. As I started earlier on, we have archangels, we have cherubim, seraphims, and a whole lot of them. But today we go look to the one that is in Hebrews chapter 1, 13 and 14. Okay. We each have guardian angels. All of us, we have one. The moment you are born, God say, Angel Andrews, <laughs> go and take care of uh, the air hostess. In your life, I am with you. The good things are right them. The bad things are right them. Oh yes, we are right up. <laughs> when you are praying, I'm there. When you are doing your concern, I am there. So watch out. Don't do your concern. The things you watch on your phone, he will be there with you. We are watching together. Hey! Someone is looking on the phone. You can read this one from Psalm 91 verse 11. The Bible says, For you command his angels concerning you, to guard you in all your ways. In how many ways? Oh. In how many ways? Oh. When you are under the shower? Oh. When you are looking at your telephone? Oh. When you are doing your oh. oh. When you are going shopping? Oh. Oh. When you are lazy in bed, don't want to come to check on Friday evening? Oh. Oh. Look at the way. God. <laughs> you see? The angels are there watching you in all your ways. ways. Besides, don't ask you, you couldn't come to church on Friday. Oh, I went to work. Oh, you lie. You know you are at home. The angels were there with you. Hello. Is it going well? So the angels are there to do what? Look at the, the, the word there. What is that? God. The difference between God and God. What? Why are you laughing? <laughs> because they are guarding you. James, the angel was there last night. The thing you did, the angel saw it. He told me. <laughs> Psalm 34, verse 6 says, This poor man called. The Lord heard him. He saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamped around those who fear him, and he delivers them. Yesterday we read this quotation here. The Bible says, the angel of the Lord encamps. He must come. No, 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 You know what you do? No, 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 We just learned that angels, they are huge. They are powerful. They have weights, right? So in case he wants to encamp around you, more than a time, and that's true. He protects you, he guards you wherever that you go. Amen. So when things are coming, he will block it for you. Amen. When sickness is coming, he will block it for you. Amen. When somebody throw you to do Abalaba, he will block it for you. <laughs> uh, that's the encampment. He guards you. Who does the angel do? To those who do what? Who fear the Lord. The Bible says, he encamp around those who fear God. So if you fear God, it isn't things you shouldn't do. Yeah. If you fear God, speak the truth. The more you do these good things and holy things, you get your angel closer to you. Amen. We learned earlier that they are holy. So when you do unholy things, they take a distance from you. They have not gone, they are there. What do you do, whatever you do? Don't bring the dirty thing at time. No, no, no. Ah, ah, ah. Stink it. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when accident is coming, because they are, you, they don't ask, because the Bible says so. I didn't write the Bible. It's there. And it will come around you. But when you be going to share, to pray, your life is good, you think positive things. In the, in the day you think about the verses you read, meditate, the angels are getting closer and they encamp around you. Amen. 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 They are there to serve us. 
Now, duties and responsibilities of these angels. The first one is to praise. Like us, we praise God. Psalm 148 verse 2. They praise God every day. So when it's praise and worship time, we are praising God. The angels, they are doing it. So if you are called to praise and dance, it's a privilege. Amen. Grab it. Mm. Don't you feel good doing the work that angels do? Yeah. Angels are always on time. Nine o'clock, you are supposed to be. Who was supposed to do the opening prayer today? Angela. Angela. No. No, not you. No. 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 You got a person who was there. That's what Sarah did. And you'll be checked around 9 30. And they want angels to protect you. Let's continue. They always say, Holy, Holy. Holy, holy Lord, the heaven is good of you, full of your glory. As Nazareth says, the strength. Amen. All these things in the Bible tells us the angels are 24-7 worshiping and praising God. Amen. What again do they do? The God is against evil. The Bible says the angels of the Lord and come around those who fear him. You are a God-fearing person, the angels are assigned to guard you against evil. They are also messengers. When you pray to God, you must expect an answer. And the answer you are expecting, who is going to bring it? The angel. They are God's messengers to you. They are also ministering spirits. Once upon a time, when Elijah was running away from Jezebel, he went to a place and he fell asleep. It was an angel who came and cooked for him. And you built for him bread. He eat. Drank water. He sleep again. Then he said, my friend, wake up, eat, because the journey is going to be long. So the angels, God sent them to come and minister to us. Amen. What did they, they do? They carry out miracles and God's plan. You have been thinking that one thing or the other is not possible. God said, uh, Angel uh, Andrews, <laughs> do I have proof to Rajen that I can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ever think or imagine? You see, God never by part is well. And then you will come and whisper into your ears, this thing by time, why don't you do it this way? Uh, okay, yeah. all of a sudden you get an idea to do what you wanted to do. You think, am I just like that? No. God said, I need to come and whisper into you. Amen. Again, God's judgment. When God wants to punish somebody, you send one angel, go. Do it. Second Kings chapter 19, verse 35. There was a king called Sanakarab. He sent armies to Israel to defeat them. And Zechariah prayed. And God said, don't worry. Mm -hmm. So one night, God sent one angel. Only one. I want you to read this verse by yourself. Open your Bible and read it. Second Kings 19.35. Later on, we'll be opening the room for uh, questions. So... Uh, if you have questions, write them down. Second Kings 1935. Who is there? Are you there? Are you there? Yeah. Good. Robert is going to wait. Please, keep quiet and listen. It's okay, go ahead. Take it one by one so that I will explain. Uh -huh. Did not, that means that evening, that night, what happened? The angel from the here, that means the angel of the Lord, what did he do? He killed the armies of Assyria. Uh -huh. How many? I'm asking them, how many? How many? 185,000 people. You can sit down. The Bible says, one night, God gave the angel the power, go, kill them. And you know how many times, how many are we here? One, two, three, thousand, thousand. Thousand, thousands, ah, one hundred and eighty-five. One night. 
shoop, 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 shoop. Chaka. The next morning, they went there, they saw only dead bodies. That is what agents can do. For them, they, they don't have abadayo. They don't have field cup. No, when God says kill, kill. Yes. So anything you are doing, God will assign just one angel. Go and do this. Then you are gone. Disappear. Mm. Mm. One night, one angel killed how many? 185,000. So they carry out God's judgment. So be careful the things we do and say. So that when God wants to send one angel to you, you will be very careful. Amen. The last one. They serve man and they serve God. Amen. So when God sent them to go and do something, to come and do it. Then when you also pray, you worship God here as Elder said, let your angels carry our worship unto you. They will carry it also there. They become messengers. Amen. Amen. Any questions so far up to this point? Any question? Right here, you want to ask something? No? Okay. Should I go on now? Yeah. Okay. Am I any question? Do you have an angel? Oh, no. Good. What's her name? <laughs> what is his name? Okay. Angels are different from human beings in significant aspects. Unlike human beings, angels do not grow old or hungry or tired. <clears throat> Don't say, oh God, I'm going to sleep. My angel, I know you are tired by now, so I won't. God, you yourself, come and visit me. And you don't get, don't get tired. Look what one angel can do one night. Kill 185,000 people. Will you be tired? No. You will not be. Good. But you pray for five minutes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Nay. We should be at the jet. Amen. Angels can at times appear in bodily form in the case of the announcement. For example, as uh, our coordinator rightly explained, they can appear for you to see them. <coughs> when he went to Mary to announce Jesus Christ's birth, he stood before Mary and said, Mary, you are highly favored. God says you're going to have a child. Oh, how can this be? I don't know. Oh, you do. They converse like me and Robert doing now. So angels can appear in a bodily form. Right now, there are angels here with us. Yeah, I've seen three already. They are here. They are a. Okay, pray for God to open your eyes. Any gathering that are sanctity to God, his angels are here. Good. Again, angels are similar to human beings in significant aspects as well. Eh? There are differences and there are similarities. And similarities. Good. They have personalities and they have individualities. What am I saying? And I like ask, they are created to serve God and worship God to His glory. What I meant earlier on is that when the angel came to Zachariah and said, Zachariah, you are old. You are Papa, you're going to have a baby. Zachariah said, Ah, my friend, me, I'm old now. And just said, Because you didn't believe me, you'll not be able to talk. On patching it yet. Just believe it. The same thing applies. Me, I know that I'm telling you, I say it's not true. What do you think you are? Would I get angry? That's what I'm saying. They have similarities like we do. How do we have a throw? Taka and what yaman pad. He goes. Because you didn't believe me, you're not gonna speak that until the baby is born. And Sakriya never spoke until John the Baptist was born. Amen. Good. Again, Psalm 103, verse 20 says. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word. He needs to the voice of his word. Angels, they listen to God's word and they do accordingly. But as for you, God says, that shall not God say. Ah, look at a man, come on, come on. That shall not do this. That's your favorite. But the angels, they do the business of God. They bless a lot of hosts and they minister unto God. When an elder stands here to preach to you, God is using him to speak. So when he says, keep quiet, when he's talking, don't talk, that is why James will do the more. That is when even Yoga, yoga will do even the worst. <laughs> but angels, they always obey God's instructions. Are you here? Yes. Good. 
they also have joy. Yes. The Bible says when one person repents, what happens in heaven? There is joy. There is joy there. So they are also they also have joy. They also be happy. So the more you make your angel happy, the more he too will make you also happy. Amen. Who can answer me? What can cause your angel to be angry with you? Sin. Sin. Disobedience. The more you do those things, then you take it away from God. He's holy. It's like walking with me and uh, you are using something to play with your feet. And that's my friend, no matter if you matter again, you're going to visit my my again. Again, they have desire. Their desire is that God's will in your life be done. That's their desire. They always want to see us happy. This one, let me write a text. First Peter 1, verse 12. Sir, please read for us. First Peter 1, verse 12. The next one, David, David will read. Emmanuel and James. What's going on there? Uh -huh. First Peter chapter 1, verse 12. You want to have you open? Uh-huh. First Peter 1, 12. To them it was revealed that not to themselves but to us that were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which the angels desire to look into. The angels, they are watching us. They desire to look for the things that we are doing. Or when you say group, The desire, because when God promised that He will come in the flesh and deliver mankind from sin, then they said, what, what is He talking about? They didn't know. So they were happy when Jesus Christ was born. So once we are here doing this and that, they are all strangers. It's like, what are they doing? The desire to see the things that we are doing. When you go down your knees praying, they wonder, what is He praying about? Can I carry this message? Oh, they desire to know. And it's not a bad thing. They also have desire, just like you have. Angels are actually aware of and they are involved in your affairs. Don't think you do things and go cause free. They are aware. They are aware of the things you do. Angels are actually aware of everything. The involvement of angelic beings in human affairs is part and parcel of their role in promoting. God's plan for your future. For example, God has promised or planned that uh, Sister Comfort was going to be the National Women's Secretary when she's at the age of 35. Amen. And she starts from God starts from now to infuse intelligence into her. God will protect uh, Sister Comfort until that age until everything that God has put in her will come to pass. And will use an engine to do that. Angels will be involved. When you sleep at night, angel will come and stand on your bed and give you the idea how to prepare a sermon, how to preach to young ladies, how to speak to young boys. You see, you put all this idea in your mind, they will be involved in your life. Amen. Tell me why you are laughing. That is funny. I think what you said is uh -huh. to young ladies. <laughs> because I said that. Um, and the young ladies. Um, okay. Now, this one here, take it here. Angels should neither be worshipped nor disrespected. Don't disrespect an angel. Amen. We saw it yesterday, right? Yes, sir. Mm. When the uh, officer one wanted to this and you, Gabriel, he said, my friend, listen, why are you lost in your own pain and your losses? He came up, and the officer one was very quiet. They don't want to be disrespected. In any discussion of angels, it's important to keep in mind both their presence to be rarity and their eventual subordination to us. 
Angels are to be not to be disrespected. Amen. That's why when he went to Zachariah, Zachariah, you're gonna have a baby. Zachariah said, Hey, my friend, it's not true. He said, Hey, because you said that, you're gonna be a dumb. Mm. They are straightforward. So when it's Friday evening, 7 30, we gather here and you disrespect your angel who is speaking to your mind to come and say, My friend, let me sleep. I'm tired. Let me turn the TV. Okay, go on. You two, one occasion, something will happen. You say, My friend, you two, go and face your own problem. <laughs> Friday service is part of the evening service. Come. Only Eric and sometimes uh, Jeff. Who is it? Me. Ah, you want not to? Hey, I'm not even. Christian, even nowadays, is. You can issue. I was. 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 I are you here? You're about to close, so don't worry. They guide and protect you. I've spoken about that. Um, okay. When you are in trouble, angels are assigned to come and free you. Yeah, and the example is Acts of Apostles chapter 5, verse 19. When Herod has killed James and he pleased the people, he put <laughs> one disciple also in prison. Now he was going to kill the next day. What was the name of that angel, uh, that disciple? James was killed Peter, by Herod. Peter, Peter. In the night, the Bible said, the angel of the Lord came and hit his hand, my friend, wake up, wake up. Put on your shoes, let's go. He was at the back side of the prison. Doors after doors after doors, gas after gas after gas. And he went and took Peter out. That's the text. The night, the angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple and speak to the people the words of his life. So he was in prison, but the angel went inside there, brought him out. So any kind of difficulty that you are in, God will assign an angel to come and help you out. Amen. Amen. I'm not saying when you have got to... Uh, steal something from the shop, no. then you will come and take it for the prison. No, not that one. Uh -huh. It's when you are doing something right and it brought you problem. God will intervene. So don't go and steal. Amen. Amen. Another one is Acts chapter 12, verses 7 to 11. When you go home, read them. Peter, again. You see? So, time and time again, God always sent his angels to come and redeem us or remove us from any kind of troubles that we are going through. And this one, they are there to observe you. Open your Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. The angels are there to observe who? You. Me? Me. They are there to observe who? I. Who? Me? I. <coughs> they are there to observe. Turn around and tell the person beside you. Angels are there to observe. They are there to observe. The Bible says, For we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels. We have been made a spectacle. When you go to a, a, a football stadium to watch a football, we call you a spectator, right? Watching the match. So we have become. Something for the angels to watch us. Chucky. Read it if you are there. Read it. Well, you didn't see that you are talking. First Corinthians chapter 4, verses 9. Mm -hmm. Or oh, is 7? Let me see. It's 9. Yeah, it's 9. Good. What is that? Oh, you, you have read something. It's okay. Now, are you there? Read for us. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 9. Connie, are you there? Where is it, Ophelia? She's in school. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. And I want to hear you. For I think of God has said, said for, for us for an awesome master, as it were appointed to them. For we are made a special into. The world and the angels and to men. We are made as special unto men and to the angels. So, what the things you do, people are watching you, 
The same thing, angels are also what? Watching you and they are taking your report back to God. So if I were you from now, if I'm walking, I will look back. <laughs> they are watching you. Yes, Emmanuel. Um, yeah, um, I have a question that, uh, that you said um, God can, yeah, can send his angel to save you. Like, um, he, he, see, yeah, like um, he saved uh, Peter from the prison. My question is why didn't God send the angel to, to save James when before um, the king could have okay. killed him? Okay. James was the brother of John. Okay. Let me give you a simple answer. Okay. Once upon a time, the mother came to Jesus and asked him, Jesus, can one of my sons sit at your left hand and the other one on my left hand? Jesus said, oh, this position you are asking for. By the way, can you drink from the cup I'm going to drink from? I mean, the suffering I'm going to go through. Can you suffer that suffer? He said, yes, we can suffer. I said, okay, no problem. One will sit here, one will sit there. Okay. James, you go first. Go and sit down. Your head. And the other one, John, they even put him in boiling oil to fry his body. Before they put him in Patmos Island. He's for the revelations. You see? The things we ask for, if you know what they are intended to, you will watch out the prayer we pray. God had every power to have delivered James, but it was for a purpose, yes. so that the news will spread. You understand? So right now, if we are four elders here, and something happens, elder will take his back to Mo, Presiding will take his own to Antwerp, I'll take my own to Breda. <laughs> uh, but then to take his own to somewhere and And when we go there, we all establish new churches. Are we not spreading out? We are spreading out. But that one led the word to spread. On the, on the other side, it fulfills what their mother asked on their behalf. Amen. You guys, please turn up. Uh, five minutes to close. <laughs> they are also here to encourage you. Sometimes you feel down in spirit. You've been crying, you've been waning the whole night. You are troubled. In the name of the Lord, I have sent to come and encourage you. Sister, don't worry. Things will be better, okay? It's not the end of the world. Cheer up. And it's are there. They fire you last night from your job. No job. And you say, don't worry. God will make a way for you. They are there to encourage you. They also are there to deliver us. Oh, he will come and deliver you. On the operation table, God delivered you. Yes. That's why you had a testimony. Amen. What did they do? Okay, we have read this one. That's the end of it. Okay. So angels are part and parcel of our lives. God assigned them to us for a special task. They can save the whole town as we watched yesterday. And they can also save you as an individual. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Two questions. Yes, Colin. Um, I wanted to ask if, let's say, I send a very 100% send every day, and I have a manager who guides me, is it possible uh, there will be no end of the Because the more you send, the more. The you take a distance from it. They are holy. Yeah, they are holy. You can sit down. The Bible says, God's ear is attentive to those who fear him. Yeah. So the more you know what you are doing and sin, you keep on doing, you keep on doing. God has not become deaf, but your sin caused him to be deaf. It comes as a block. So when the angel is supposed to carry your prayer to him, and you say, me, this dirty prayer, no. No, it's like I don't even pray. You don't even pray? He will stand there and look at you. Away from you. So he will be still uh, there for you. He is there for you, all right. He will take notes of all the things you are doing. I will never come close to you because you are not a very school. That's it. You still be there. I have a question. We are about to close. You must ask your question. You must ask your question. You must ask About angels for today. <laughs> Don't forget, Satan was an angel. He fell. The Bible says one third of the angels in heaven came down with him. And the angels in heaven, they are 
Then the chi use the word um, in Psalm 1 for it says, or what he said, I'm young, uh, we are in the chi. Yeah, you can't count them. Uncountable angels. So if Satan can have one third of them and bring them here to be demons, then you have to be careful. They'll be everywhere. Next time when you go to demonology, I'll teach you how all this witchcraft and evil spirit came about. But today we go only to the holy and good angels. No one else. I just want to say something to uh, okay. encourage you. Yeah, yeah contribution. Uh, please, we have to understand angels, they are not God. Otherwise, you get confused. They are not God. These are not God. Though. Angels, they are not God, but they are there. They are assigned by God to guide and protect you and bring you messages. And messages. Amen. 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 Or in other hand, they work under the authority of God. Yes. Unless God asks them to do something, they will not do. God so say, kill, kill. Mm. Yeah, brother. Uh, John. Uh, John. Um, yeah, John. John. I don't know whether it's relevant or not, but I'll ask. Everything is relevant. Um, okay. um, the difference between our uh, angels and saints, because I know some, saints. Yeah, some believers consider us uh, saints as they pray through them. So I want to know the difference between angels and saints. Okay. Angel and a saint. Angels are ministering spirits according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. God assigned them to us to serve us, to minister unto us, who are heads of salvation. And as we said, we don't pray to them. Jesus said, anything that you ask from the Father, hmm, through my name, you shall receive it. He did not say, pray through the saints, and you shall have it. We don't pray through saints, we don't pray through angels. And there's a difference between a saint and an angel. The Bible says, I think in fact, second Corinthians say, pray also for the saints. That means for the righteous people, for the apostles, for the disciples, pray for them. I am a saint. No. <laughs> don't change your face, I am a saint. Why? In the sight of God, I am righteous, I am clean, I am holy. I do God's work as I'm doing now, I am a saint. So when you go down your knees, pray for me, but don't pray through me. Yeah. Oh, God of Adam, Chris, God, uh, 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> Father God, bless this man. Give him more intelligence than you are praying for me. So when you pray through a saint, it's, it's, it's demonic. Don't do that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you were um, saying um, uh, he should not pray through you, like saying um, um, God of uh, Andrews or something. But you know, our fathers, they said God of Isaac, Isaac God yeah. of God Abraham, yes. God of. When they are worshiping, we call them the patriarchs. Why do we always refer to them? When God wanted to start a nation, Israel, who did He choose? When he wanted to bring them out of Egypt, who did he choose? When he wanted to lead them through Jericho to the promised land, who did he choose? When they came to the promised land, they settled at Israel. He wanted to teach them wisdom, who did he choose? Solomon. So every dispensation, God chose a person. We always see we are spiritually Israelites, and our father is who? Abraham. We worship the God that our Father worshiped. So anytime God is referring to the Israelites, like he says, I am God of your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He referred to them. The reason why I say don't pray through you. Don't pray through me. I'm a man. Okay. Yeah. 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 You can't pray through me. I'm a man. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And from that moment, Israelites were praying, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. Peter, James, John, they are all Israelites. Jesus Christ chose them to be his disciples. Yeah. But it's very good that one day they asked him, how do we need to pray? That was the big because they know actually they pray God of Abraham, <coughs> God of Isaac, God of Jacob. But that day, they asked Jesus, how do we have to pray? Then he said, bring in Matthew chapter, chapter 6. He said, when you were praying, say, our Father, and as they, they, are, they were asked to pray in this way, but our Father in heaven, I don't know if they don't do so, and, uh, uh, if, I will have time. if we have to teach you, giving our Father in heaven alone, you could take about one more than that. Oh, you have another question. No, I want to. Yep. Actually, they are really confused. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. They are confused. You're confused. No, no. So, no, no, so no, if uh, the hands, because someone can call. What can I know is that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Please, you have to understand that in this world we have so many different kind of gods. Yeah. yeah. So when we talk about saint, actually Catholics, yeah. we have. Saint Paul, Saint Anthony, Michael. What, before somebody can name Saint, if you go to uh, uh, France, we have somebody called uh, Saint Francis Aziz or something, yeah. Yeah. because he was a righteous person. He was a very good person. He obeyed the commandments of God. So they use the name Saint to describe somebody who qualified all these things. So actually, you don't need to play a pray to that person. You understand? If you want to be saint, you can also be good, do all these uh, righteous things. It's a title they give to saint. those people. Now we have, it, it, it confused people because when I become a righteous person, spiritually, some people go by the seaside and they call my spirit to come. They call me spiritual to come, then I pray and I do wonders. But at the end of the day, you will lose everything and it will be a curse in your family. So that saint is nothing that you have to pray through. You have to understand that. You cannot, that is not a God. We understand. We understand. We Thing that is confusing you. Yeah. That and we have the God of Ba. People worship Ba, Jezebel God. So you can't, when you are praying, conclusion, you have to use the God of Abraham, the God of. That is the differentiating yeah. between our God and the other gods. Yeah. So, Mama, uh, I'm, I understood you very well. I'm, I'm, I'm still have, a, um, I'm still have something body in my mind that if um, Papa is my father. It means the God that he is serving now is my God. Yeah. So if uh, tomorrow he he's not be around or he's gone, it means if I'm praying and I, um, if something is bothering me, I can say, Oh, God is my God Papa, of. the God of my Papa, yeah. mm -hmm. um, Papa Robert. Yeah, uh, God of and our Papa, God of and our Yeah, help me. God solve this situation. It yeah. means. Yeah. yeah it's, it's, Referring to my God. God. Yeah. So it's the same. Yeah. 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 Beloved, 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 beloved
I will pray through Makion mm -hmm. because he established this church mm -hmm. and God, uh, God uh, called him to this church. So I believe in him. Mm -hmm. So if I am praying, I, I know that through God, you will pass through him to save me. Thank you, God. Yes. Who is, is Makion's God? So why is God? God. God of Brothers and sisters, uh, let's uh, take note of this. In the Old Testament, I'm going to read the Bible well, because of Sins before you come to God, someone who is holy has to lead you people there. So when they are praying, they pray to those people they think they are holy to God. But here is a case we have been saved. Jesus Christ has come to our salvation. So there's no need for us to pray to somebody when we can pray directly to God. So I don't really understand why this should be a problem right now. God bless you. Um, you have a wonderful song. You say, "Ah, the mention of your name, every knee shall bow." Wait, wait, wait. Ah, the mention of your name, every tongue. When you read somewhere, Acts chapter four, chapter chapter four, say, "There's no other name given to us on the earth, or in a bed, or in the sea, that we can get, we can get salvation." Apart from the name Jesus Christ. Beloved, let me tell you one thing. The reason why the apostles were suffering is because of all these things. They were standing on the name of Jesus Christ, preaching the gospel, telling the people, turning them to Christ. And there were so many other pastors that they portrayed themselves. Sometimes they want even people to come to them, like you mentioned Obini Nyame, Uhu Nyame, I don't care. They are not gods. They need to be judged. Even the angels that Elder is teaching now. There are some angels when you read the book of Jude. Jude, Jude I think verse 5. Jude 1 6. Jude 5 and 1 6. He said, even God has tied them with chains. And he has keeping them in darkness that he will destroy them, even angels. So if you don't know before, today you have come to our notice. Don't try to depend on your knowledge, your personal understanding. Bible says that we should pray through Jesus Christ to reach our God. So preach, nobody is God, any human being like you, you don't even need to bow before them. <laughs> I think I'm clear. Oh, you want something more? So. Last time, there were some people saying, let's let, let, let say, sometimes they say, Christianity is not false. You can't command me. But open your Bible to Genesis chapter 19, verse 19, and see why even God chose Abraham. He said, I know Abraham will command his children to serve me. He said, I know Abraham will command simply because he said it because there are some people who allow their children to do anything that they want. Yeah. But I'm pleading with you. You may study in the schools, you may read many books, many understandings, but let the Bible teach you. Amen. Amen. You understand me? If, don't get confused. If you have a question, just ask. Ask your question. That will be the last one. Is there a stand? Do we get tired of We just read that. Jesus answered them and said, When you go there to heaven, you're going to be like the angels. And we learn that angels don't get tired, they don't get hungry. <laughs> Okay, here's an upstart. Here's a hip upstart. But you're not as your mama. Have you a nose? Oh, have you a heart? Have you a heart? Yeah. Catch your mama. You see, Bernard said, I'll let your mother is throat, you have a climb. You are like your mother. 
You be like the angels. You're not gonna go to tired, you're not gonna sleep, you're not gonna get hungry. That's why you're gonna enjoy them. So better be dead. Amen. I hope there's no more confusion in the house. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap for angels. asking these questions because you really need to get clear mind of God that you are serving. It's not something we impose on you, but something you you understand yourself. That even though you will go out and preach to others to bring souls to God. Amen. Amen. So please I believe you are clear. If you are not clear, let lift up that we have our just by minutes and you still have to we yes, we'll take, we'll, we'll take offering and give, give the announcement and we are going. No more questions? No more questions? Then we are concluding, eh? Okay. okay. All right. Next time when we teach about prayer, all these things will come in for you to understand better. Okay? All right. If no questions, then let me conclude. So in conclusion, we are saying that God made angels for your sins. They are there to guide you and guard you. They are there to observe you, deliver you out of troubles. Why? Hebrews 1, 14, 13 and 14 says, They are ministering spirits sent forth to do the obedience of them that are heirs of salvation. So as long as you belong to Christ and his salvation, angels are there for you. Amen. 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 Bow down your and let's pray. Father, we thank you this morning. Our God in heaven. You can do all things exceedingly abundantly than more than we can even think or imagine. We thank you for teaching us your word. We thank you for imparting unto us another knowledge. As we are about to end this program, we ask the Most High, let your angels that you have assigned unto us be our guards. Let them give us a photographic memory.